Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2021 Jeep Cherokee. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your Cherokee and it is going to be a hidden cross tube and that's nice because you're not going to be able to really see anything except for the receiver opening of the hitch, giving you a nice clean OEM look but all the usability of your hitch. And this one is a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. So you're gonna have tons of options for ball mounts, bike racks or cargo carriers, or honestly any accessory that you may load up here. Two inch by two inch is a nice one to find a bunch. All of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now the hitch does not come with one. A lot of times the accessories that you pick up will have one, but if you wanna pick up a locking version, those are really nice because you can leave your accessories in place, lock it in and know that no one's gonna be able to just walk away with those. Now, if you plan on towing a trailer, you do have some rolled style safety chain loops, nice and open for your standard S hook or even a larger clevis style hook to be able to hook up to that. And speaking of towing, it does have some pretty serious numbers here for a class three hitch. Uh, as far as your gross trailer weight rating, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer, plus the accessories loaded up, we're coming in at 4,500 pounds. We also have a tongue weight rating of 675, which is gonna be that downward pressure that's put on here. So some of your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers and bike racks, now, 675 is pretty good, so you should be able to load those up pretty well without going over it. And this can be used with weight distribution hitch, and it is gonna bump those numbers up a little bit. Your gross trailer weight rating is gonna be 5,500 pounds, and your tongue weight rating is gonna bump up to 750. But before just hooking up, make sure that all of your components play ball with those numbers, and also check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing, and then compare all those, and take the lowest of all those numbers just to make sure that you're staying safe while towing. A few quick measurements from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're coming in right at about six inches, and that's gonna be important for choosing accessories, especially ones that may stow uh, or go into a folding position. You wanna make sure that you're not gonna make clearance or have any clearance issues with your rear fascia, so make sure you're taking that into account when choosing those accessories. Another thing to also account for is gonna be your ground clearance, and this one comes in right at about 12 and a half inches. And that's important for some of your accessories that may hang a little bit lower, but also to determine if you need a rise or a drop for your trailer. Now, if you are planning on towing, make sure you measure the coupler of the trailer nice and level, and then you can determine if you need to rise or drop from that. And something to keep in mind with loaded accessories like a cargo carrier bike rack, since they're suspended, they are gonna be an extension of the vehicle, and as you go up an incline, they are gonna to wanna to tilt towards the ground. So keep that in mind when driving loaded up. Uh, that way you're not gonna damage your accessories, especially going over big inclines or any rocky or rough terrain. As far as installation goes, this one can get a little bit tricky because you do have to remove the muffler and kind of unbolt the exhaust from the mid pipe. Now, with that being said, you do have these decorative exhaust vessels that you do have to make clearance for to kind of slide that out. And you may have to trim those as well for clearance of the hitch. Other than that, you really are just bolting it up into the frame uh, using a fish wire technique. And I'm gonna walk you through all of it it, just to make sure that you get your hitch installed. So follow along and let's take a look at the install. We are going to have to remove our muffler away from the exhaust and that's going to give us that access to be able to get our hitch in place. So to begin this we're going to grab a 13 millimeter socket and head over to each side as we're going to have an exhaust hanger bracket. And you'll see there's going to be two bolts holding that in so we'll go ahead and get these removed. Now throughout the entire process, I highly recommend having a nice organized spot for all your hardware that you're taking off. It's gonna make it that much easier for reinstallation. Now before we get too far dropping our muffler down, we do wanna make sure we're supporting it and that way it's gonna kinda keep our exhaust upstream safer from dropping down. Um, so I'm gonna create a little bit of a cradle here uh, and I might actually cradle this section too, that way when we're taking our hardware off, it's not gonna just completely drop. So I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap. If you're doing this at home, you can use a cardboard box, a block of wood, something like that. Just kinda make sure that exhaust isn't free hanging. So using my sway bar here, I just created an attachment point. I'm gonna go ahead and do that up here as well. Now we're gonna move up and we're gonna see that we have this clamp attaching this rear section with our muffler to our mid pipe here. So there's gonna be a 15 millimeter bolt that's gonna be right here clamping that down. We're gonna go ahead using a ratchet and socket. I'm gonna loosen this up and that's gonna allow us to separate this and pull our muffler out and out of the way. So 
If you are doing this at home in your garage or driveway, I kind of recommend maybe jacking up the rear of the vehicle just for clearance to be able to get this out. Um, that's kind of up to you, but we'll get this loosened. Now in order to separate this, it's about slid over about two inches. So you are gonna have to push on the muffler and kind of get this to separate, kind of wiggling it back and forth until you get that to come off. Now at this point, since I have a cam buckle strap, I'm gonna lower this down and kind of get our mufflers out. Now it is in this trim bezel here, so we will have to kind of slide it forward before taking it out. And this is definitely where jacking up that vehicle could come into play, just to kind of get that angle. So now we'll set this aside. Now we're gonna get ready to put our hardware in the frame to mount up our hitch, but before we do that, we need to make clearance. We have uh, this wire loom here that's attached to the frame with just kind of a plastic clip. So if you can use a trim panel tool, it makes it really easy. If not a flat head, just kind of pry on this and also on the side here. And that's gonna allow us to have that space to be able to get our hitch up in place. Now, there's gonna be a side bolt as well, so it might be worth prying off this side plastic as well. We can always pop this back in once we have our hitch in place. Now, on the other side, we're gonna have pretty much the same thing, so go ahead and make that clearance by removing your wire. Now, we're gonna be passing our hardware using a fish wire technique in three spots. So we have this hole here. We're gonna be using this uh, as an access hole for some of this. And there's also the one on the side here, and it's gonna be pretty much the same on the other side. So we'll go ahead and get this further one in place first. So I'm gonna put just a little bend here on our fish wire and take that coiled end, feed it through, and make your way to that access hole. Now at this point, I put a little bend here on the end and that way it doesn't pull through. And it also helps when we get our hitch in place. These kind of snap in, makes it easier to guide them up. So take your spacer block, and you can feed that in the frame. We're then gonna coil our carriage bolt onto our fish wire here. And then just push that through, jostle that around until that comes through. To mount up our side carriage bolt, there's gonna be two holes and we wanna make sure that we're using the rear, the furthest rear hole. It should kind of line up with this rear stud here. So just make sure you have that one Otherwise, you're gonna have your hardware in the wrong place. But same thing, we're just gonna feed that coiled end through and feed it back to our access hole. And then we'll take our spacer block, feed that in the frame. And then the same with our carriage bolt. Now this one, you don't necessarily need to pull all the way through um, because to get the hitch in place, it's gonna be a lot easier if this is in the frame. Uh, and then we'll use this to kind of hold the frame up when we lift it. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of keep it here. And then we can go ahead and get our reverse fish wire in place. Now your reverse fish wire is gonna be pretty much a similar concept. It's pretty easy here. I'm gonna just take my spacer block, feed it over the coil and just kind of hold that in place. Go ahead and get your carriage bolt on the coiled section. Feed that into the frame, same with your spacer block. And now we have our three mounting points here. Now I'll go ahead and repeat on the other side. And something else that I'll recommend too, before raising your hitch in place, the one on the side of the frame rail, I actually, I'm gonna go ahead and push that in the frame. And that way when we raise our hitch up, we can use this one to pull it through and hold it in place. It makes it a lot easier if it's already in the frame rail while lifting up our hitch. Now where our fish wire goes out on the side, there's gonna be this caulk that they've put in here uh, in between the seams. We do need to kind of get this cut back because it's gonna give our clearance issues here with our hitch when we go in place. So now using a putty knife, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of scrape this away, make sure that it's nice and clear. Um, again, this is just gonna be enough tolerance for it, that hitch to not wanna go up. So getting this cleared out means that it's gonna be uh, cinched up nice and tight and we're still gonna have that clearance. So go ahead, scrape this off. You're gonna have it on the other side too, so just make sure that those are cleared on both sides of the vehicle. Now, I have Joe here helping me get our hitch up in place, and I do recommend having an extra set of hands. It'll make it a lot easier. And we're gonna take our fish wires, and this is where that bend kind of comes into place. Once you kind of pass it through, it'll hold it in. And we need to make sure that we're using this rear hole 
and then the forward hole this middle one we're not going to be using and the side here we're also going to feed that wire through and as we raise it up since we have that pushed in the frame rail we'll just pull that out and that's going to support it on each side so make sure you pull those out and that's going to make it easier to get our hardware in place so leave the fish wires on even after we raise this up and we have it uh, with our side bolts through Make sure you push that wiring back. There we go. And so now with the weight of the hitch, that's gonna kind of keep that in place. So at this point, if you have both sides supported, I'm gonna go ahead and just get one of the nuts started. Now, the main thing is you wanna make sure that this doesn't push in back into the frame rail. Um, that's why our fish wires really come in handy here. So what I'll do, I'm gonna pull this off now. You can use the hitch to kind of put pressure against it. So I'm just kind of pushing that um, to where this shouldn't push up. If you need to, you can use a flathead screwdriver or even your finger. And you're just going to get these hand threaded on. And we'll go ahead and get the rest of our hardware hand tightened as well. Now we are having some clearance issues with our exhaust bezels here. Um, these are just decorative and they just kind of bump into this. So it might have, you might've noticed that it was pretty tight to get the hitch up. Mine's supported by some of the hardware, but I am gonna go ahead and notch this so it fits better. I'm using a, a multi-tool here and I'm just gonna trim this back. Now, if you have aviation shears or even a Dremel, you should be able to notch this just enough to get that clearance to where it's not gonna be rubbing against the hitch. I didn't have to trim too much, but with this having clearance now, I'll go ahead and repeat on the other side and just trim as necessary. And when tightening down our hardware, we're gonna to wanna to do the bottom ones first, and that's gonna help cinch that up because if we tighten the side ones, it's not gonna allow that to draw up all the way. So go ahead, get these tightened down. Now, we're gonna be coming back with a torque wrench. You don't have to get crazy here. You just want it nice and snug. Once you have those tightened, then you can go ahead and get this side one. All of these are gonna just be a three quarter inch socket. So go ahead and get all of your hardware tightened down. Now at this point, we're gonna take our torque wrench and we're gonna to torque these down to what's in the instruction manual. Now, this is gonna make sure that it's gonna be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight, putting stress on the threads and causing damage. So go through and torque them all down properly. Now if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. Now at this point, we'll get our wiring put back up. Now you may lose some of those mounting points, but the main thing is, as long as you get at least one or two of them back in place, that should hold it up, keeping it out of the way and still protected. Now the hole that you have in the center of the hitch does align with that hole, so you may be able to use the, uh, that plastic clip. You may have to kind of move it around to where it's not sitting exactly where it used to be here. Uh, you might not be able to get them all, but this does kind of keep that up in place for us. Now with everything torqued down, we can go ahead and get our muffler put back in place. Now your best bet here is to feed that into the bezels as far as you can. And uh, we're gonna have to kind of just wiggle this in place. Now to get this to draw back in, sometimes you can use a dead blow hammer to kind of knock it in. A uh, little wiggling here and there will kind of move it along, but that hammer is going to help push that. So I'm going to grab my dead blow, knock this in place, and then we'll get everything tightened up, including this nut as well as our brackets. Something that I've found is before really tightening down that mid pipe connection, you want to make sure that you have your exhaust hangers up over these supports because if it's under here, it's going to make the exhaust crooked. You won't be able to get your brackets up. So you do kind of have to get this in place first, make sure this is up, and then you can get that pipe tightened down. Now at this point, we have our exhaust back up. Take whatever you had supporting your downstream exhaust out of the way, and then all that's left to do is load up your accessories and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the E-Trailer Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2021 Jeep Cherokee.